So if you've been playing the Italian game for a while, you've almost certainly run into the so-called two knights defense. That happens after the moves e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. We play our Italian bishop c4 and now knight f6. This along with bishop to c5 are the two most popular responses. Now in the last couple of videos on the channel called the uh, Deutz Gambit video and the Max Lang attack, we were focusing on this move bishop c5 but knight f6 is equally popular and uh, equally strong, so we need to know what to do against it. In this video, what I'm going to recommend is one of the kind of sidelines. The most popular moves here is knight g5 moving into the fried liver attack, targeting the f7 pawn, or d3 going into sort of mainline positions, the kind of play that you see the most at the kind of highest uh, grandmaster level. Instead of this, we're going to take a different direction. We're going to be aggressive and we're going to play a variation that isn't so popular at the Grandmaster level, but it's not popular for one reason. Uh, and that is that if black knows exactly what they're doing, the position is equal. It's just a draw. And we will show that line. But at the non-professional level, a lot of the time, thankfully, black doesn't know what they're doing. And uh, this is a very good way to, to try and fight for an advantage. So the move is pawn to d4. Now, after pawn to d4, one of the reasons this is so good is because black has three ways of capturing. This way or capturing the pawn on e4. But only one of them is good. The rest already give them serious trouble. So let's say that they take with the knight. That's bad. And that's because we can play bishop takes pawn, sacrificing a piece, now winning a second pawn, now we're up one pawn, and after the king moves, we take the knight, and the dust has settled, but we're up a pawn. And also the king is really, really bad. So this is no good for black. So that's knight takes d4. If knight takes e4, that's almost as bad. And this, is, uh, this actually is played a lot by players. And what they do is, after we take their pawn, again an eye for an eye, most players, they develop bishop c5. And they're very happy in that they have this pressure and they're about to castle, but the happiness only lasts uh, a split second if white finds the best move, and that is queen d5, hitting the knight and hitting the pawn, and it's game over. There's just no good move because you can't go knight d6 defending everything because our pawn covers. You can't go knight g5 because that square is also covered. So black loses a full piece. So uh, therefore, in this position, we already have a great chance to get an advantage. If black takes the wrong way, we're already close to winning. So after d4, what they should do is they should take uh, pawn takes d4. And now the move is castle. When we castle, black has two options. One is to take this pawn, and the other one that they go for a lot is they just play bishop c5. Now, if they play bishop c5, you might recognize this position from the previous video on the Max Lang attack. This is actually what, what we call in chess a transposition, meaning you get the exact same position as in the Max Lang attack, but you got it from a different move order. Uh, but it doesn't matter for our purposes. We'll continue playing e5 and after d5, pawn takes, pawn takes. This is a line that was analyzed in the Max Lang video. So if they want something else that is playable but that isn't the Max Lang, they have to take this pawn. And that's the reason for the name, the double gambit accepted. So now we're in this double gambit. We're down two pawns as white, but it's okay because we have an idea and that is rookie one. And again, we set the next trap. If black goes f5, for example, this is a very bad move. We can go bishop g5, bishop goes to e7 to block, they, we take, they take, and now we just gang up on this knight. We go knight d2, they try and develop, we go bishop d5, and we're going to take here on e4. We're down two pawns, but we're going to take here, we're going to win one pawn back, this guy, and then we're also going to win this one because it's going to be attacked by too many pieces. And at the same time as we do all of this, the question is where, you know, how can black develop their king? So big problems here for black. Even with best play, they're struggling to hang on. Um, the computers already say, you know, white is winning. Okay, so instead of this, what should black play? They have to find the move d5. And now it looks good for black because they're up two pawns, our bishop is under fire, but we have one clever tactic, and that is bishop takes d5. Now, the point is they take our bishop, and now we go knight c3. And with knight c3, there is no option. It's a very clever move because they cannot take with the knight. And if they take with the pawn, then we win their queen. 
So it's a nice, uh, nice point and it forces them to move their queen away. And this is where we branch into two main paths. Uh, most of the time what black does is queen a5 and queen h5. Sometimes black does go elsewhere, so if you get this in your games, don't be surprised. I just um, The video would just be too long if we looked at every single queen uh, move. So the ones I will cover is queen a5 and queen h5. They're by far the most popular. Okay, so the first one that we can talk about is what to do against queen a5. So against queen a5, we're going to take the knight, and believe it or not, we're threatening checkmate. You can pause the video if you want to test yourself. I'll show the, the checkmate right now. Let's say that black does something silly like a6. We go knight f6 with a double check. And when the king moves, we go rook e8 and that's checkmate. So it goes to show the danger that uh, awaits the black player if they're not careful. So after knight takes e4, most of the time what black does is they go bishop e6. Now we go knight g5, we target that bishop. And after castle, we pick up this pawn. And this is an interesting position because... The material is equal, and to be honest, it's approximately equal. But there's something interesting that I found, is that most black players here, they continue with this move, bishop d6. And it leads to this forcing sequence. We go bishop g5, we hit their rook. They challenge our rook. We defend our rook, and we threaten to take. And believe it or not, the only way to stay in the game, to be in an equal position, is to go king d7, and just try and fight to take control of the e-file. But we have a clever move. We go rook e1. And now if they take our rook, queen takes rook will actually be checkmate because this square is gone because of our bishop. So they cannot do that. And what some black players do is they go rook to f8. They give us the e-file, but now we're really in control. The position is much better for white. So actually the best move, the only move to stay in the game for black is to sacrifice their queen. They take here on e1, queen takes queen, and rook takes. Now, two rooks for a queen, it just depends. Sometimes the queen is better, other times the, rook, uh, the rooks are better. But what I noticed in this position is that uh, my computer, when I was analyzing, just to make sure that what I show you is, is true, um, when I was analyzing this, the computer said white is a little bit better. And then I looked at the games that have been played online in this position, and I saw... White has scored like 65%, so that's pretty good. And the reason I think that that's the case is that black's pawns, they're a little bit loose. As I was pointing out here, white at some point can bring the queen in, start targeting the pawns, and it's very difficult for black to hold everything together. So white has an easy plan. White probably wants to go something like g3, just for no back rank made ideas at any point, and then start moving the queen in and target the pawns and try and pick up one or two pawns. So... I think this is a kind of a nice way to play, nice line to keep in mind if your opponent goes queen a5. Let's go back to what started this all off, and that is that in this position here, when the queen was attacked, black moved the queen to a5. But black can also go queen to h5, sorry, queen to h5. Now we still take the knight, and now uh, the most common move, black can play something like bishop e7 as well. If you want to check that out by yourself, I would suggest that you do because it can be played, but by far the most common move is bishop to e6. And here we have a really nice idea. So black's point with the last move is to castle queenside. That's their goal. They want to get out of, uh, out of dodge, let's say. And they would be really happy if you did something like take this pawn, queen takes, rook takes, now let him castle. Suddenly you're pinned. It's true, you got back your pawns, but... You, you have no, no edge anymore in this position, right? It's, it's equal, and if anything, black probably has better place pieces. So, you know, you're the one scrambling to finish your development. So we don't want that. So instead, we want to keep their king in the center of the board. And the way to do this after bishop e6 is to play bishop g5. And this is one of the reasons I love this line, which is that now, a lot of the time, the natural move black jumps for is the move pawn to h6 and they say i want to get rid of this bishop but now we hit him with one of the prettier uh, tactics in this position and that is bishop f6 the point of bishop f6 is with the queen on h5 now after pawn takes comes knight takes f6 and we pick up uh we pick up the the queen because of the fork so they cannot take it 
And if they start to move this bishop, well, they feel very uncomfortable because we can, in some situations, pick up this pawn on g7. And so what black often tries to do against this, actually, is they go queen g6. And they just try to say, okay, now I want to take your, your bishop because now my king and queen cannot be forked. But their queen here can be hit, and we should play knight h4. And just to show you how dangerous this position can get, you know, black can try, for example, queen g4 or queen h7. Those are the only two moves. And against either of them, they get into trouble fast. For example, let's say queen g4. We move our queen away. And now, after bishop e7, they figure, well, now the pawn is defended by my queen, so I can, I can get bishop e7, I can remove this thorn from my side. But after we go h3, we hit their queen. Turns out, all of these squares are controlled by us. So after something like queen h5, we go knight g3, kick the queen away further, we pick up the pawn, rook g8 attacks both of these pieces, but we solve it in one move with knight f5. And then we've picked up this pawn, maybe the h6 pawn will fall, our pieces are really strong, this one is under pressure, and white is completely in control. So this is definitely not what you want. So after knight h4, many black players, what they'll do is they'll go queen h7. But this might, might be even worse, because here we still go queen d3. Now they try this thing to get rid of that bishop, but we simply take the bishop. And it, funnily enough, there's no good way to take back. Because if they play king takes e7, their king is in the center of the board, and we go f4, f5 is coming up very soon. The king just, you know, it won't be able to castle. So most players, what they want to do is they want to take with the knight and hope that we'll give them that extra tempo to castle. But we definitely won't. What's the most active move in this position? It's the check. We find the check here on b5. And that's a huge check. Because no matter what they do, they're going to lose. They're, the position is going to collapse. Why? Because let's say they go c6. Now we have knight d6 check as an example. And after king to d7, we can go something like this. And their king is completely horrible. My preference personally is to just take here. I think that's the simplest. We hit these two points. And if they do something like rook uh, to d8, well, we can even move our rook to d1 or we can play knight to c5. Our pieces are flooding in the position. Plus, at this point, we're not even down material. So we're attacking for free. They still cannot castle because this knight uh, gives them serious uh, trouble. And if after queen b5, they try bishop d7, here there's a beautiful idea. And that is this move queen c5. And the point after queen c5 is I'm targeting this knight and I'm actually threatening, let's say you do some move like this, I'm threatening knight f6 check. Pawn takes and queen takes e7 mate. And it's a good illustration of how bad the black pieces are because that queen is completely out of the game and there's nothing to do about uh, the pressure here on the e-file. Black, of course, could castle, but they will lose a full piece if they do. So... This is a very nice sequence and uh, just goes to show how quickly you can land your opponent in trouble if you remember this bishop f6 idea. So after queen h5, knight takes e4, bishop e6, bishop g5, we've said h6 is a bad move. And we've shown some other cool ideas in the queen a5 uh, positions, but we also said that with best play, black can get a draw. So unfortunately, we wish that wasn't the case and there was just wins everywhere, but that's the name of the game. So I will show you now how black can draw. So after bishop g5, black goes bishop d6. That's the best move. We have nothing better than to take the bishop. And after pawn takes d6, we are not in time to take this pawn on d4 because our bishop is hanging. So if we go knight takes, they take our bishop. So what we have to do is drop the bishop back. We hit these two points. And black typically defends them like this. Now, for now, black is still hanging on to their extra pawn, but we can go c3 and use the fact that black cannot take here without losing their queen. That would be a nice way to win at the last uh, minute, but it's unlikely to happen because anybody who gets to this position here, probably they've studied the theory, so it's unlikely that they'll blunder this way, but it might happen. After c3, though, what is mo much more common is that black will just castle, and now after knight takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4, queen takes d4, c takes d4, you got this boring position, this equal position. But, you know, 
that's just that's how chess goes especially nowadays in the modern era of computers um you know it's harder typically to prove an advantage from the white side than it is to prove uh, equality from the black side uh but you know it is what it is and at the end of the day if you if you if there wasn't a way to draw from the black side then uh then you know you probably nobody would ever play e4 e5 right so anyway i'm just uh, i'm trying to console you guys it's not so bad this is going to happen maybe 20 percent, 25 percent of the time depending on your on the level that you're playing at and the rest of the time you'll be able to get a nice position uh with chances for both sides but hopefully with an advantage so hope you enjoyed this video and um yeah if you have and if you've been enjoying the series drop a like helps me out and uh, I will see you in the next one.